earlier on a fourth down late in the game in that loss. We were running it so well, almost better than we were throwing it. The idea was, you know, run it twice, try to get into, you know, third and manageable, you know, third and five or less, and then have two shots at it. And uh, we weren't able to do that. I mean, I felt like everybody was covered at the time. I made my decision to, to take off and run. I mean, they're playing the coverage where it's trying to force me to run, you know. But, uh, you know, I thought I, would, I had a chance of getting it, and I yeah, made a good play. Take a look at the playoff picture now. The Colts 6-5, and five, dropping Indy to 7th in the AFC Conference. The Texans move up to 7-4, first place in the AFC South. They have sole possession of first place. The Colts, are, yeah, they drop. Not great. And this team has some questions now. I'm looking. I did a quick uh, Bing search of Jacoby Brissett's name, guys. Bleacher Report. Jacoby Brissett holding back Colts is present and future problem for Indianapolis. Mm. Holding back the Colts. Mm. The Indianapolis star. If Colts are going to playoffs, Jacoby Brissett can't play like a backup. Did this loss change the way that you view the Colts? Are these, you know, warranted headlines? No, that's just overreaction on a uh, Friday. You know, I, I feel like a quarterback is, is, is due a game where they don't play up to the standards of everybody that supports him. Jacoby Brissett didn't play terrible. He made a couple of decisions that he won back. You listen to him after the game. I'm not mad at him for making that decision late in the game. You know, here's the thing about this team. You can judge them and say they don't look like a playoff team. I'm mm -hmm. not sure they can make it to Miami. But Phil Simms, the great quarterback who I work with on Sundays, he said something to me a long time ago. Never judge a player when he's injured. So I'll take that same philosophy and I'll apply it to this team. They're dealing with a lot. Marlon Mack is a phenomenal talent. Before he went down, you're talking the top five running back in this league. Mm -hmm. T.Y. Hilton, the one thing I saw yesterday was him on the sideline stretching versus him on the field running routes. Mm -hmm. The one time he was out there, Jacoby Brissett actually kept it and scored a touchdown when he did the quarterback keeper. So with the guys that are banged up and all the issues that they're dealing with, I'm not going to judge this team. Now, is that an excuse? No, because at this point in the season, a lot of teams are banged up, and this is who you are. The question is, how healthy can they get okay. by the time that the playoff run needs to it's happen? the only thing. Like, what do we need to see out of this Colts squad to really get on board? You, you could be justified as a Colts fan this morning to think, all right, well, we're not doing anything this season. Because last night, you were, like, protecting Brissett in the play calling. And I'm not questioning Reich and Sirianni what they did. They went Jonathan Williams heavy, and then, hey— T.Y. Hilton's going to gut it out and going to play, and T.Y. did not play well. And the problem was either he was rusty or he was injured, but he said after the game it was 100% on me. This is a guy who's owned the Texans. T.Y. had two huge drops in this game. He only had three catches on the night, and Nate, to your point, he only played 25 snaps. Right. So you take out T.Y. Hilton. You don't have much of a vertical game. And then you're like, all right, let's rely on Jonathan Williams, who had a carry in his NFL career with the Colts before last week to win us a huge divisional matchup. They're playing underhanded. And I think you can legitimately question whether they've got the weapons and whether they've got the guys mm. to win a big game in the AFC in the playoffs. I think the Texans are the better team on paper. And last mm. night were the better team on the field. Mm. If you look at it and you look at <clears throat> excuse me, the standings and this is the record, it doesn't look great. I look at the Colts as a double standard. There's a few coaches in this league I don't give up on. It's Doug Peterson, which is hard right now, Bill Belichick, and Frank Reich. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I think they lost a one-score game at, on the road in which their linebacker made a miracle play to save the game, and I think they were robbed of it. If you want to be check the schedule guy, it's supple. It is real soft. They, they can absolutely reel off four or five wins. I've just been burned before. One in five start. Andrew Luck retires. They're done. They're done. Be very careful shoveling dirt on the Colts this morning. Last night's game was ugly. I mean, it was a heinous display by the Colts. Everybody's banged up. I still think, now maybe they can't win the division. If they're going to get the wild card, they got to root against the Bills. They got to root against the Raiders. But I am not betting against them. I think they can still get it together. There's dynamic teams in the AFC, like look no further than Baltimore. Some dynamic play calling is going to be necessary. Yeah. Do you think that they have that? Because that's what it's going to take. And then I have to just ask you, what are your expectations for the Colts? Because if you told me week one, Andrew Luck just retires, Brissett's taking over. I don't know that I would put them at six and five, fighting for a wild card or a division win. So what are your expectations in this ride or die role with them? My expectations are they get to the playoffs. I still think that. And it's an unbelievably overachieving thing. But look, they got the Titans next week. You take care of the Titans, you're right. on your way. I think it was an ugly game, and I'm not going to count them out. I just can't do it. I've done it before. And, and yet, 
Brissett last night, you look at him against Watson, those guys, I mean, Brissett's been struck, but like, look at the pass attempts last night and look at the yards per attempt. Do they not trust him? He, he averaged 5.2 yards per attempt. I think they're a running team, Peter. I think no matter who the running back is, they go behind the line. Both I know. sort of are. The and line. Peter, you, you've had this. We, we've been crowning Jacoby Brissett for six weeks. We can't just jump off now because on the road he didn't play it great. It felt like they were protecting him last night. And maybe they had to because T.Y. wasn't himself and Pascal wasn't getting open and there just aren't the weapons available. But you will not win games in the playoffs if you have to play despite your quarterback and have to protect him. You can win games running the ball. Your quarterback has to make the big plays. They were winning this game, mm -hmm. but Brissett at the end, it's like, get that big one. They just didn't yeah. have it when the Houston Texans absolutely did. I can't emphasize enough how big of an impact T.Y. Hilton makes when he's healthy. He hasn't been healthy since October 30th. I know. He was not in the, the game last point. night. That was, was not T.Y. Hilton. He literally just suited up and he was in the game to play decoy. And he had he, drops. Even the drops that he had. And the reason he dropped those balls because we know him to be a very sure-handed wide receiver. It's because he was thinking about his body. I've been there. Mm, I've been true. on the field right. trying to force the issue for my team and everybody saying we need you out there. And I'm not even thinking about the route. I'm not thinking about catching a ball. I'm thinking about retearing something I aggravated or a bump and bruise that I had going into this game. Game. I mean, on the flip side, when you look at the Houston Texans, just look at the impact that Will Fuller had, that type of speech on the field. Mm -hmm. That is the same type of impact that T.Y., a healthy T.Y. Hilton has on this offense. Everybody plays better. Jacoby Brissett, Eric Ebron, the host of wide receivers in the running game is there because now all of a sudden the team can't come in with everybody in their eyes on that mm -hmm. backfield. Mm -hmm. You have to back up. Yesterday, they're like, oh, T.Y. is at about 70%. He's not the speedster that he usually is. Right. So we can play him one-on-one -on -one and utilize a safety in the box to help stop that run game, which is strong for the Colts. They look good, and they, of course, now have sole possession of first place in the AFC South. More on this game, but we got to talk about the ones that are going to go down on Sunday. Ian Rappaport is with us. He is somewhere in New York, and we have a huge, huge one coming up this weekend, Ian, and thanks for hanging out with us. I do believe I would like some updates on Mohamed Sanu, Philip Dorsett, what's going on with New England as they host the Cowboys this week. Yeah, huge game for the Patriots on Sunday. Let's take a look at some of their key playmakers. First of all, Mohamed Sanu, who went down last Sunday with a little bit of a high ankle sprain. This was deemed as a minor injury, did not, for instance, require all the additional testing that ankle sprains usually get on, on Monday and Tuesday. That's how you know this is something not considered serious. And while he did not practice for the Patriots yesterday, he was on the practice field. He was spotted by reporters. At least a small step forward. We'll see if Sanu is able to get out there today uh, if, and determine whether or not he is a game-time decision for Sunday or whether he's just going to be ruled out. Obviously, we're going to find out more on that later in the day. And then Philip Dorsett, who has a concussion in the NFL's concussion protocol, didn't practice on Wednesday, but was out there yesterday in a limited fashion. This is really going to be, can he beat the clock? Can he get cleared from the NFL's concussion protocol? Probably not today, but maybe on Saturday uh, when it comes time to, to kind of make your final determinations before the game, we will see if the Patriots have two of their key receivers out there for Tom Brady against the Cowboys. They haven't been throwing downfield much at all this season, but of course the Cowboys give up a ton of big plays. Having Dorsett out there would be key for Brady, who did not look happy after a win last week. He wants to get that ball through the air. Maybe he does if Dorsett and Sanu are active for him in Foxborough. Thank you so much, Ian. We'll talk to you in a bit. Uh, and we'll be back after this, guys. More GMFB on the way. And what should we talk about? Highlights from last night still? Sure. We can talk about that. We can go outside. We can do all kinds of stuff.